Well, hello there. I'm Sandy Alnock, and it's World Watercolor Month, so I am finally bringing you the painting that I promised you a while back. I showed you a sneak peek of a giant wave, and a lot of you were excited to see it or see it in a class. It didn't make it in the class because it's too hard, but I'll show it to you here on YouTube, and I will tell you about the class as well. But while I show you the painting of the wave, I'm going to talk to you about a crazy idea that I'm going to try. I'm, I'm going to, I'm making a commitment here on YouTube in public so my friend Jackie can like punch me if I don't do it. Because now it has to be because I said it out loud. So let me first tell you about the class. And this is Watercolor Seascapes Level 4 in the Landscape Foundation series. I haven't added to that series since 21, 2021. Like, it's been way too long, so sorry about that. Uh, those of you who've been waiting for me to teach you how to paint waves, this is your moment. We're going to start with a close-up of water and just talk about how to make the shapes that will make your water undulate and how to make some that are soft and how you get those really soft blends and the, the soft edges versus the hard edges to get your reflections. And so we're going to start with close-up and then we're going to move out and just slowly back out to get different types of water. You know, here we've got water that's over the sand and it's got all kinds of foam on the surface. That little sea foam stuff, color changes in the water as it gets deeper. And then we start moving into big waves that's, that are starting to move. And how do we get that movement and that foam, that sea foam? And we are going to use some masking fluid. We are going to use a little bit of gouache. I'll give you permission to do that because it's level four. and level five, you would have to do it all with negative painting. So I'm just going to give you some training wheels to be able to enjoy this class. But the idea is to give you a lot of different techniques and different colorways that you can then apply to a bunch of different seascapes. Maybe you have vacation photos that you've been wanting to paint, and this would be an excellent opportunity to do that. And by the way, my needle brush gets a lot of workout. So if you've wanted to know how to use that brush, it's a little pricey, but... Um, I would say it's almost necessary in the class because it's used a lot. So that class is available, links in the doobly-doo. Now let me show you a speed painting of the reject from the class. This one did not make it in. I thought originally that it might. And you'll even see my hands moving around and pointing to things because as I was filming, I was telling myself, okay, don't forget to tell them this, don't forget to tell them that. And I decided I wouldn't bother going through and editing all that out. So you'll see my hands flying around doing weird things. But the reason this didn't make it in is because it's all negative painting. And I don't know, but maybe three artists in the entire world who love negative painting as much as I do, who would take a class from me. There's people who are way better than me who love doing negative painting, but they don't need a class from me. So I it wouldn't be worth my time to turn it into one. So it's just a speed lesson here. But while it's going on, I want to talk to you about this other thing. And it's an idea that's been bumping around in my brain for a couple of years now. And I shouldn't say it's an idea because now it's going to happen. My friend Jackie would punch me if I still called it an idea. She's been telling me I should do this for a long time because I have a skill that I didn't realize was super helpful or good or you know, like sometimes you can't see those things in yourself. And even as an art instructor, I should have known this was a thing that I do. But I am apparently really good at giving critiques that come across more as advice than critiques. I'm taking classes elsewhere all the time and different stuff. And there's one class that I'm in where we do regular critique sessions on Zoom. And I start to get sought out because people want to know what I think about their painting. And my friend Jackie is like always seeking me out and asking my advice. And she's like, you should do this for more people. This would really be helpful. And I've had students who have asked about mentoring and that sort of thing. And every time I think about it, the reason it's been going on for years 
is my brain starts to melt down trying to figure out how I fit in having mentees at the same time as I'm doing everything else. Because you guys know me, I am busier than a one-armed paper hanger. So my dad used to say, and I just don't know how I would fit in something huge and massive and do justice to anybody that I'm giving like mentorship to. But this one class that I'm in that does these regular critique sessions, like I think I could do that. I think I could handle doing a couple of Zoom calls and giving people advice. I'm probably not going to call them critique sessions. I don't know. Maybe I'll still call it that, but it sort of feels like advice sessions would be a little happier of a, a name for them. Maybe if you have ideas, let me know. But the first one is going to start. I'm just going to say it now. And if I say it now, then I have to be held accountable to it. It's going to start either in mid to late August sometime. And it's going to be only for people who have signed up for the Landscape Foundations classes. And the reason for that is because at least I know, whoops, something just fell over. <laughs> at least I know that uh, people who have signed up for those classes are pretty serious about their art and they've already made a good investment. They might really want to push that further. And those four classes are related enough that I think in a single session, you could watch somebody getting advice on a tree and still learn something about water and and vice versa. So I think everybody could benefit from seeing other other types of paintings done. And it's all watercolor, so at least everybody would be in the same medium. Eventually, if this goes well, then I might offer a series of critique sessions that would be in, you know, colored pencil or alcohol markers. I could offer some that would be for beginners. And it, I don't know how long it'll take me to get to all the different options. And there might be some that'll be cross mediums. So maybe it'll be how to get perspective in nature scenes. Because I can't tell you how many scenes I've seen with a path in a in whatever drawing or painting where the path is just wrong. It's just not correct and it doesn't look realistic. So it might be like anybody who does landscapes and wants advice on perspective, that that could be a, a topic. It, there's all different kinds of ways this could go, but it it's a matter of me figuring out how to group ideas together so that whoever's participating can learn something from it. And then afterward, there would be replays available. If people want to just watch the replays, they can do that too. So that is kind of where my head is at. And the reason I'm telling you about it now, when it's not going to happen until sometime in August, is that if you want to be part of it, you might want to sign up during World Watercolor Month for a Landscape Foundations class. The Trees 1, Trees 2, Rocks and Ripples, or Seascapes, because then you get the discount from World Watercolor Month. And if you're going to sign up for the class, why not get a discount at the same time? So you can go to the World Watercolor Month page at art-classes.com. I'll link it in the doobly-doo below and then scroll down to the level four section and you'll see all of the options for those. I'm not going to include those who are taking the singles for this. I recently broke down all of my landscape foundations into individual classes for the five lessons in each one. So if you want to just try one, and see how it goes and you know do you feel like you're at a level four or not and you take one of those lessons and you're like oh i totally got this then you can sign up for the full meal deal and then i will refund the price of the single so you basically don't lose out by trying one and then deciding later that okay yeah i do want the full class but doing the singles like you only have one opportunity to put one painting into the critique so I think it doesn't make sense to offer it to the singles. So I'm only going to offer it to those who are taking the full classes. And I'm going to email all those folks in August when I get my head wrapped around this with what the cost will be, how it's going to work, how you sign up, all that good stuff in case they want to participate. 
If you come upon this video long past the date when this group will be happening in 2024, then look in the description down below the video. I will put a link to anything that you might need to know, whether it's signing up for a new group or if you want to watch a replay of the earlier group that happened. I don't know if this will become a thing, but I just want to offer it and see what happens. You can't try something new if you don't put it out into the universe. And so I'm going to. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me today. World Watercolor Month link is in the doobly-doo to the page that has the coupon code that's only good till the end of July. So take advantage of it and let's help raise money for kiddos and see how we do by the end of the month for our fundraising. Thank you so much. Go out and create something every day and I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.